thank you everyone for having me here next, uh, this year as well. Before diving inside the presentation, let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever heard about uh, the concept of technological singularity? One, two, three, four, okay, few of you. For people who don't know, uh, this concept uh, actually was created already. I found the first uh, edition about this 30 years ago. Um, it's a, a theoretical point where the technology will overcome the way of thinking of human being, let me say the brain power. And uh, there is a mathematician from San Diego University, Professor Werner Vinge. You can download the essay from this professor and have a look at that. It's quite interesting because he raises a lot of questions about uh, what is it about, how we can uh, uh, govern, ma make some governance about that, how we can manage that, uh, uh, what will happen, and so on and so forth. Uh, one of the one other question is when is this going to happen? And I found this, but there are many on the web, and it amazed me that 2023, according to this research, should be the day where the machines will reach the brain power. Well, I don't know if this is true or not, but this is something we we, we can think about for sure. Uh, well, David already introduced a few words about me. I am um, chief innovation evangelist inside uh, the company who is developing Axcoli. And I, yeah, I wrote a, a book, in particular during the COVID time, I wrote a machine learning AI book where you can find quite a lot of information, especially case study in the customer care space I'm familiar with. And I also help startups especially in the AI world, in uh, one of the uh, university accelerator and incubator in Italy. Uh, Axcoli is, uh, yeah, it's a product. It's, uh, it relies on multiple uh, open source engines on backend, like Asterisk, FreeSwitch, Camellia as well sometimes. And uh, it's an eye driven customer care in particular, omni-channel customer care solution, okay? So it provides you the ability to interact with customers by using several channels, not just voice, but a lot of more messaging, especially during COVID after that, we saw a, a, an increasing request for multiple other channel interactions, and now an increasing demand for automation and AI applications. So what I'm gonna do today is to talk a little bit about uh, this topic, a brief introduction to the AI applications we see in the customer care space. I will show you a video about a concept we did, um, some conversational AI use cases in, actual, uh, in the actual world, and uh, I played a little bit with uh, not just Axcoli, but also the signal wire, freeze which uh, new virtual agent Anthony uh, mentioned about this morning, so now I'm gonna show you what we've been able to do with that. And, uh, and yeah, and finally, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, also challenges, not just the easy part. So in terms of application, I just have one single chart. It's, uh, of course, there are multiple applications you can think about looking at the customer care space, but these are what I see on the market right now the most. The first is about conversational AI, which is related to all the automation, uh, automation possibilities, so chatbot, voicebot, generally speaking, uh, automation or uh, virtual agents also. Conversational analytics provides you the possibility to uh, get inside the conversation, so imagine uh, you have a, a free switch list of voice recordings and you want to analyze that get inside a conversation to uh, use machine learning to get information about that, make predictions, analyze what's inside in terms of maybe sentiment analysis can be one of the applications, but also fraud detection, uh, whatever you can do by analyzing this kind of conversation. Another application we see now is agent recommendation. So helping the human agent in the customer care space to provide better answers 
to the customers. And uh, so they can access knowledge base information, external CRM information very quickly now with AI, quite accurate and provide fastest and accurate uh, and good answers to customers. And finally, yeah, workforce management, okay? Another application we use a lot in the customer care space to allocate proper resources at the proper time for proper uh, service to the customer. So how many agents I need right now to manage this service, how many in one hour, and so on and so forth. So uh, we worked in the past few months with the startup. They are not in the voice market or customer care. They, uh, they are a, a startup uh, very, very good in uh, designing bot. They are based uh, close to Genova in Italy, so close to the sea, and they are very good in designing innovative bot. They did something uh, cool, and uh, we fought with them how to provide a better service by using AI, um, both to customers and also to uh, people with some kind of disabilities. Hmm? And uh, so I, let me run for you the video, and I'll be right back after that. I think you need to switch on the audio. Okay, it worked. Nowadays, big cities are struggling with sustainability challenges. Thanks. Commuters get very stressed when they are stuck in traffic surrounded by toxic air. So, what about a smart water mobility? Let's take Charlie, for example a 25-year-old man who lives in New York. Charlie is committed to safeguard the environment and for this reason, he loves cycling. Although cycling is not always practical, he needs to find an alternative solution. Wait, Charlie has just made a great discovery. He has found Jerry's Boats, an eco-friendly, self-driving boat that can be booked from his smartphone. Charlie arrives with his bike on the Hudson River Quay. He's not entirely sure if he can take his bike. No worries. There are various ways he can contact customer service to find out. Charlie selects the chat channel. The bot recognizes him and answers his questions. However, he can't see how big his bike is. So the bot decides to escalate this task to the first available agent. The bot has found Sophie who is currently reading all the information and is ready to take over the conversation. Sophie sends Charlie a link to connect via video chat. With one click, they connect. At this point, Sophie can see that Charles's bike is standard size and therefore included in the ticket. Hooray! He is happy and ready to come on board. The boat arrives at the pier, adjusts in height, remains stabilized to allow an easy boarding. Inside, all the passengers sit comfortably, ready for a peaceful journey through the city. Max, the virtual pilot, greets all passengers and explains that they can use the available monitors to communicate along the way. Zero noise, zero pollution, and zero motion sickness. Oh, what a life! Wait, here we have Tom, who has an urgent request for Captain Max, as he forgot his wallet at the cafe. Hello, Tom. How can I help you? I need to get off urgently. The next stop is only in 10 minutes. No, I can't wait. Hmm, let me check. I could actually arrange an emergency docking in one minute. Oh yes, please. Captain Max understands that Tom has a real emergency and therefore satisfies his request thanks to the boat's ability to adapt to any landing height. Tom is very happy with the entire experience. With just one click, he leaves five stars feedback. Okay, so that, that was a concept that uh, we showed actually to some uh, lake navigations and sea navigations company in Italy, and it was, uh, that we, we, we had good feedback about that. Of course, it's just a concept, but I will show you how we did that with also the virtual agent from Signal Wire later. 
uh, I don't want to get inside this picture just to tell that conversational AI is a growing market. This is a, a forecast in 2032. Uh, we are talking about more than 20% compound annual growth rate. Uh, we have uh, few case study now. So a few years ago, those kind of conversational AI was only proof of concept, experimental phases, projects, but now are real things. So we are getting more and more on actual projects. This is uh, one of the many we are following in, here in, uh, in Italy. Actually, it's one of the largest hospital. So by using conversational AI virtual agents, they are now managing like uh, around 80% of the incoming voice calls with, with virtual agent with conversational AI. Mm. So this is a snapshot about the details about that. You see actually it's 79% managed by voice, but the other calls are managed by human actually. And uh, you can see here, the the details about what they are doing with that. So uh, how we can do that with uh, free switch, for example, or with Xcolli? Well, we can do that with uh, what I would like to call an advanced IBR. Um, so of course, uh, one of the things that we can do is to connect the solutions to some human-to-machine -to -machine engine, like Google Dialogflow, Amazon Lex, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is an example about the IVR we built for the healthcare hospital you saw before, okay? Uh, you can do something similar with SignalWord as well. I played with that. They have very good integration with Dialogflow. Very nice because they can give the control full at a certain point to Dialogflow. So you just need to play here on the Dialogflow side to design the conversation. Mm -hmm. So intent uh, and everything if you are a master in dial flow. You can do a very good job. Uh, what we, we, we have in plan now is uh, we're on the Xcoli side to uh, improve the uh, applications we have. Uh, we, 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 we have just released, or we are releasing right now, the new speech engine connected uh, also with the open source OpenAI speech recognition, so Whisper in this case, and we're working to integrate the OpenAI API as well. Uh, this is an example on the, on the right side of coding. You can, it's in Python, this one, on how to use Whisper uh, to play with that and the uh, speech engine they have. And uh, yeah, I played with SignalWire as well. I'd like to thank in particular Brian West and uh, Andre Martins, thank you very much for your help. You were great. And what uh, amazed me is that you can actually use Swaml, they call it that Swaml, um, so script like XML to design your, to provide to the machine your prompt. And based on that, uh, tell the machine how to behave. So in the previous video that uh, I show you, this is what I'm going to do here. And uh, I think I have here, yeah, this is the signal wire interface, and this is the part where we program the Zwemel. So you can see the voice engine we selected, the barge confidence. The, you can also set a, a randomness to be more or less random. Uh, and this is the prompt, uh, okay? I, can, I have no time to run about that now, but uh, you can see that I can teach the machine, for example, uh, how to behave in case somebody is uh, asking for some emergency, if they want to bring on board some uh, extra bags or bicycle and so on and so forth. I publish this, and then this is what is going to happen. I have prepared a second video for you, which is a real demo. I played with that, so let's let's try to play this ahoy there this is captain assistant jane from smart water taxi how can i assist you today hi i have an emergency I need to get off the boat as soon as possible because i need to retrieve the wallet i forgot at the restaurant please 
I'm sorry to hear that you're in an emergency situation. To assist you, I'll need to authenticate your identity. Could you please provide me with your first name, ticket number and PIN code? Once I have this information, I'll be able to evaluate the nearest doc for you. Sure, my name is Diego. My ticket number is 5789 and my PIN code is 2567. Thank you, Diego, for providing your information. I'm sorry to hear about your wallet. Based on my estimation, the next approaching dock is expected in approximately seven minutes. However, if you need to get off the boat before that, I can evaluate an emergency dock for you. Please be prepared to get off as soon as possible. Keep yes, in mind please. that you will yes, need to please. scan your ticket using the scanners me, on the boat for any emergency docking authorization. Understood, Diego. I will evaluate an emergency dock for you. Please be prepared to get off the boat as soon as possible. Remember to scan your ticket using the scanners on the boat for the emergency docking authorization. Hang tight and I'll make the necessary arrangements for you. Okay, I'm gonna scan my ticket right now. That's great, Diego. Please go ahead and scan your ticket using the scanners on the boat. Once you've done that, You'll be able to proceed with the emergency docking authorization. Please let me know once you've completed the scanning process. I've just done that. Fantastic, Diego. You've successfully scanned your ticket. Now, I will evaluate the nearest emergency dock for you. Please hold on for a moment while I check the available options. I apologize for the inconvenience, but I'm currently unable to transfer you to emergency support. However, I can leave a message for the support team to call you back as soon as possible. Could you please provide me with your contact number so that they can reach you? I have another question for you. May I ask you something else? Of course, Diego. I'm here to assist you. Please feel free to ask any other questions you may have, and I'll do my best to help you. What else would you like to know? What if I need to bring a bike with me next time I travel with you? Ahoy, Diego. If you need to bring a bag with you on your next trip with Smart Water Taxi, we have a convenient option for you. Please use the Smart Water Taxi app and navigate to the Bring Special Carriage With Me section. There, you can use the QR code scanner to take a picture of your bag and upload it on the app. Within no, two not hours a bag. of uploading not a bag. the picture, I need to, I need you to will bring receive a, a notification with the reservation details and any extra fee. Ahoy, Diego. I apologize for the confusion. If you need to bring a bike or any other oversized object with you on your next trip with Smart Water Taxi, you can still use the Smart Water Taxi app and navigate to the Bring Special Carriage With Me section. From there, you can use the QR code scanner to take a picture of your bike or oversized object and upload it on the app. Within two hours of uploading the picture, you will receive a notification with the reservation details and any extra fee that may be required for carrying the item. This way, we can ensure that your bike or oversized object is accommodated during your journey. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Oh, that's, that's perfect. Uh, can I also order a pizza here with you? <laughs> Ahoy, Diego. I'm sorry, but as Captain Assistant Jane, I'm here to assist you with smart water taxi related inquiries and services. Unfortunately, I'm unable to help you with ordering a pizza. However, I can provide you with recommendations for local pizza places near the docks if you'd like. Just let me know your location, and I'll be happy to assist you. Is there anything else I can assist you with regarding Smart Water Taxi? No, I think I can find my location for the pizza. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so what it amazed me was that you can set up several randomness level and it will provide you random or not answers and also you saw that I interrupt I interrupted the I've been able to make interruption and so it was really like MRCP or something like that very live streaming recognizing that and trying to to help me even when it gets interrupted uh, of course that's not everything easy as it turns to be there are develop, the deployment challenges when you want to tackle a conversational AI project uh, Few of them, like these, is uh, of course uh, communication, voice communication are not just about verbal, 
uh, but there are, they are multimodal, so I can use gesture, facial expressions, tone of voice, and this is something that, well, I would say some uh, artificial intelligence engine, they are getting there as well now, because, for example, GPT-4 now is multimodal. Maybe it's not ready like it, it needed to be, but it's some kind of multimodal engine. And of course, yeah, people are also another challenge. So find the right people, uh, new, new opportunities also for <laughs> new job will arise, like a prompt engineer or a, a conversational designer and uh, skills like that. Um, another challenge, but I will need uh, a full day to talk about this, is about ethical and sustainable AI, pretty much a great topic. And yeah, that's, I think, a wrap up. Uh, well, one more thing now. Uh, I forgot at the beginning of the presentation, I mentioned about the singularity AI. So one of the questions raised was uh, when uh, and what, uh, what, sorry, what is going to happen when we reach the singularity? And to answer about that, maybe some of you will be disappointed, but yeah, I'd like to quote one of the most important philosophers <laughs> in the history, and he told that uh, the only true wisdom is in knowing that you know nothing. So maybe we can get back to be a little bit humble and understand and be aware that we actually don't know what will be happening when we reach the singularity by definition of singularity itself. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, time. Diego. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're just going into a break, but we do have time for a couple of questions. If anybody would like to ask one of Diego, I see we've got our mic man there. Anybody got a question they would like to pose? There's one there, sir. Okay, the gentleman's running down with the mic for you. Okay, go ahead, Colin. So with um, text, it's difficult to speak tell that you're speaking to a uh, robot uh, or an AI or a machine learning algorithm. Uh, with voice, it's pretty damn obvious. So uh, at least at the moment, how many weeks, months, minutes, hours, days, years is it going to be until AI can confuse us and you won't know whether it's an uh, AI or not? Uh... Uh, well, I don't think that there will be a question of many years. Um, we are reaching that, that kind of level, and I think that we will be reaching that pretty soon. Um, that raises, of course, a lot of other questions, like, uh, for example, the European AI Act, and in America they are doing at the Congress now something, I don't know if they will be doing something similar, or, but they are thinking about that, that that's the main ethical issue, which is if I call a machine and the machine is answering me and I'm not able to recognize on the other side there is a robot, I should know about that. So one of the things that you find in the UE, UE Act is customer care should uh, reveal that on the other side there is a robot or a machine, not a human. Thanks for the question, by the way. Thank you, Diego. One yeah, in the back there, there from Ryan. One. Go ahead, Ryan. In your example uh, that you built with SignalWire through JetGBT into Dialogflow, do you not find that that's redundant? Uh, th those were two alternatives example, of course. Maybe I was not very much clear. Th th those were two alternative examples. So, uh, you can use Dialflow or Amazon Lex or any other commercial human-to-machine engine, and we normally do that, and we've been doing that until a uh, few weeks ago. <laughs> but yeah, with the new concept of virtual agents uh, trained by Prompt, uh, you don't need to do that. It's completely a different game changer for sure, and it's, it's really powerful. Thank you, Diego. Do you, Ryan, do you feel that answered your question? Good. Okay, one more down here then with Zoa, and then we will go to our break. So here's a question from Zoa. So you mentioned the new jobs for like prompt engineers, <coughs> specifically for, for the prompt engineer. How long do you think that job will be there before it's taken over by AI? 
<laughs> I don't know, maybe like uh, and most part of the people here and programmers uh, could find other jobs because AI can do the same. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I of course, it's yeah. not, uh, it, it's, it's an interesting job, uh, but um, it's difficult to predict the future. I, I'm convinced that AI could help in that as well. I, I think you can already ask it at this moment to, to, to yeah. write a prompt. Obviously, it's not going to be all that great, but. Yeah, uh, we, we are seeing a lot of uh, expertise and that uh, can be now, well, maybe not now, but in the near future, addressed with AI. For example, even uh, the generation of synthetic data, if you are familiar with that. So imagine to make the training to the machine, not with real data, but with data generated by an AI. So it's a kind of recursive, uh, uh, complex uh, situation, yeah. Thank you. Amazing, Thanks thank you. question. Thank you. Okay, I think we'll call it a day on the questions there. If you want to speak to Diego, he will be around. We're going to go into a break and we're going to come back at 10 past three. So back in this room at 10 past three. But for now, let's say a massive thank you to Diego Gusman. Thank you.